All right, guys, we are at episode 12, and we have a super special guest with us with Morgan Craft. Morgan is an incredible YouTube influencer with close to 8,000 subscribers. She's a fitness trainer and enthusiast. You're a singer, songwriter, and worship leader, and you're just all around an incredible role model. That's that's quite the bio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for being on, Morgan. We're happy to have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So this is an episode of first. We're excited about this because this is actually our first uh, female guest. So congratulations for that, Morgan. And and you're also yeah, that's right. Clap. And uh, because <laughs> and the fact that I can see you clapping proves that the next part is you're actually our first video. So we, we start we're starting a YouTube channel. Uh, for you guys who have hey. been following us just on the audio podcast, uh, we thank you for your support. But we're, we told you on our last episode that we're going to step it up in 2019. So this is going to be our very first video podcast. And what so- better guest to start off our video YouTube channel than a YouTube influencer like yourself, Morgan? <laughs> That's true. That's true. So uh, Morgan is a YouTuber and that's, that is a perfect thing for when we, you know, perfect guest to start our YouTube channel. So we hope you enjoy it. We're going to continue to improve the, the studio appearance, but this is the fight, the current studio. This is where we've recorded every episode besides our last one, which was in Myrtle beach. And we just look forward to uh, this conversation. It's going to be awesome. So thank you for being uh, with us so far. And we just want to, uh, Morgan, so obviously you have a you have a bio of being a YouTuber. You you write like I said to uh, Aaron and you when we were talking before the interview started. I was like, what what don't you do? <laughs> and she said, dance. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You don't dance, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Correct. So we're not going to ask you about dancing. But yeah. Please how don't. How did you get? <laughs> I won't. So how did you get your start in being a a vlogger? I mean. 8,000 subscribers or, or close to 8,000 subscribers is not uh, just, a, it wasn't a walk in the park to get, I'm sure. So no. first of all, what was the mindset behind starting vlogging and doing being a YouTuber? And uh, like, how did you get your start? Well, I kind of started getting the idea to want to do YouTube when I was really, really little. Well, not really, really little, but like, maybe around age 10 or something, I just watched a lot of other YouTubers. And I was like, that looks fun. I want to do that. I want to be and I'm like, have a really creative mindset. So for me, that was just like, a platform for me to, I guess, pour out that creativity. So I was like, I want to do this. I want to start it. So I started it. Actually, last month, I got an email that I had my channel for five years, like, and it was to date, five years that I had my channel. So um, I probably haven't started posting on there more consistently since, um, like in the past two, three years is when I really got more, um, serious about it. But, um, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to make YouTube videos and then I kind of figured out that you could kind of make it a career and, um, have it be like sort of a job. And so I was like, well, that's cool. So then I, I kind of lit a fire under my butt, I guess, and started (laughs) being consistent with it. So, that so is that question? something that you aspire to do then as a career? Do you want to do this long term or what are your plans to move forward with your YouTube channel? Yeah, I mean, when I first started, I kind of just started more hobby based because I was like, this is fun. This is cool to make videos and like just see like the amount of people that will watch your videos and all that kind of stuff. And then I kind of learned more about it. And um learn that you could make it a job and it was something that I really like to do. So I figured if I can make it my job, then great. If it doesn't, um, get big enough for me to have it be my full-time career, then obviously I'll have to do something else, which is kind of why I'm also doing fitness stuff so that I can like have that as also part of my job. But I want to kind of incorporate both of them and put them like together. So it's slowly but steadily growing. And hopefully it can be a full-time career path for me, but I don't really know if it's going to get there or I don't know when it's going to get there because it's really chance for like when you'll get subscribers, how many you're going to get, what videos will get a lot of views, what videos won't. Like I have a video of me trying to eat 10,000 calories on my channel and that has an incredible amount of views, probably my most viewed video, maybe my second most viewed, whereas 
some of my most recent videos that I've put up only have maybe like 500 views. So it's really like what video clicks with the people that are watching. Yeah, and I actually saw that video. Well, I didn't watch the video, but I did see the amount of views. And it's, I think it's like 200 some thousand yeah. views. So yeah. why do you think that video resonated? Like what, what what's that all about, the 10,000 calorie challenge? I mean, I do that a day anyways. <laughs> it's not really a challenge for Dan. It's not a challenge for me. I'm just kidding. But go ahead. Why is um, that a big deal? I actually don't know. I guess people just really like to watch other people eat food. I don't know. <laughs> they have videos called mukbangs where people just sit down and talk and eat food, which is actually kind of gross because like, you're talking with food in your mouth. But some right. people like to watch those, and it's interesting to them. So I guess like. I don't know. It's just a challenge that goes around YouTube. And I was like, well, I guess I'll try it because I like food and I can just go to the gym and work off some of the calories and then eat more. And yeah, so I don't know. It's like so big in the it? fitness community. So what did, did you eat all 10,000? Actually, y'all are going to have to watch the video to figure that out. Good call. Like good call. So what's your, what's your, uh, is it just under Morgan craft? Yep, that's my YouTube channel. Okay. I know that people now, right now, as we speak, are, are looking this up right now. <laughs> it's C-R-A-F-T, by the way. So they yes. can find this, uh, watch yes. this girl eat 10,000 calories in a day. Um, that's pretty impressive. So uh, on a more serious note, you also have uh, videos called Real and Raw or Raw and Real. Uh, where you talk about, I saw one about dating. What are some of the topics you cover in that series? And Well, I just started this probably in January, I think. And I've only made two episodes or whatever you want to call them um, for that series. So my first one was all about um, like who you are and like finding your confidence and knowing basically what God says about you and like who you are in Christ and how to um, like just know yourself and be able to um, be confident in yourself and not in a cocky way or like being super overly proud and boastful, but like just knowing who you are and being content in yourself and being able to, I gave the example in the video of like, being able to sit in a room by yourself and not feeling insecure that you're not surrounded by a group of people like that, you know, that you can just sit in a room and be content in who you are to just sit there and be like, I'm okay being by myself and I don't need to be surrounded by a bunch of people to give me affirmation or tell me that I'm cool or whatever. So that's the first one that I did. And then the second one was about um, contentment and singleness. And I actually had a guest on that one, one of my good friends from North Carolina. Um, she and I were in a conversation about, uh, singleness and we're both single. And so we were like, that would be cool to like talk to people and like kind of give them info or just like tell them how we deal with singleness and not feeling like we have to be in a relationship or have to, um, always have some, like a significant other by your side or whatever. And just like being content, kind of going with the first video a little bit, but like being content in who you are and being okay to just be you and not have someone else like always next to you, I guess. So what started this whole series? What was in your mind when you said, I want to just do a video series dedicated on how can people just be real and raw? Actually, um, I was kind of just praying a lot about what the next step was for my channel because I was like really unmotivated with it for a season. And I kind of just decided like, all right, I don't really know what I want to do with this channel. I want to kind of revamp it. And that's kind of what I'm in the process of doing because I used to have um, a lot of it be like style and fashion and beauty guru, like the typical beauty YouTuber thing. But that just was not me because I don't really, I'm not super into makeup or anything like that. So that just like wasn't my thing on YouTube, I don't think. And it wasn't, the growth wasn't there for that either. And so I decided to kind of revamp it. And I'm still kind of in that process, making it focused around um, like my three main things, fitness and music, and then ministry. Those are like my three main things that I want to focus my channel around. But this raw and real thing, uh, I was actually at church and um, 
Jordan was actually preaching and he made a call at the end to just like really tap into what God was telling you or like he just really felt like God was going to speak something impactful to someone that day and he was like just everyone be quiet and sit and just be still and listen and like allow God to speak to you and just guide you and what you need his guidance on and I was like okay and then all of a sudden that this like those two words raw and real just popped in my head and immediately I knew it had to be something on my channel and so then I kind of just went home and prayed on it some more and then decided that that needed to be a series and I'm actually like super excited to keep going and have more topics and I have so many different topics that I want to talk about that I know people struggle with or like um something that I really want to touch on I think one of my next episodes soon is going to be about um like anxiety and depression because I know a lot of people struggle with that and I don't like that they struggle with it and so I want to help yeah. them as best as I can that's awesome. That's why we that's why we say you're a good role model, Morgan. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really cool that you went from more surface type videos to yeah. more depth yeah. and to to really make an use your kind of influence that you've gained for good. Yeah. And that that is awesome. And uh, I w I just want to turn, you know, turn the the conversation back to the real and raw you know, idea based and, and, and reflect it back on you. So when it comes to, uh, things that maybe you struggle with, what are some things that, that you struggle with? Well, that, for me, that you're, that you're able to, <laughs> I, I say that because obviously a lot of times ministry and you said you're big on ministry, ministry yeah. comes from what you're struggling with first. A lot of times oh, I'm yeah. able to help people yeah. because I struggle with that. So yeah, it's like let's talk about some of the things that getting raw and real yeah. with you. Um, I think one of the main things that I don't really struggle with it as much anymore. Now, obviously things that we've struggled with in the past, um, there's still going to be things that could come up and like bring it back to your memory or try and like jog those things that you dealt with and try and bring it back. But then that's just um, like in one of my, my first raw and real videos, I just talked about um, how in the Bible it says to just take those thoughts captive and give them to God and not um, dwell on them or allow the enemy to plant those in your head. Because if you do like what you focus on becomes bigger. And so if you can just take those thoughts and not, um, dwell on them then you can kind of push them away and like give them to God and then he can help you through it but for me um, one of the biggest things that I struggled with growing up was body image and I know that that's a super big thing now too especially with women and girls and like younger girls and seeing all the things on social media now like I love fitness people on social media and I love following fitness people and seeing different workouts and seeing their progress and all that kind of stuff. But there are so many people on um, social media that are all just about physique and body image and promoting like, there's like a, what, I don't know what the word is. Like, this is how you have to look or like people think that this is how you have to look, even though that may not be what those fitness people are promoting. They may not be promoting like, Oh, you have to look like me to, get followers you have to look like me to do all this cool stuff but like it comes across that way with the flood and the amount of people that are promoting that in like unconsciously I guess so um for me growing up like body image was a big thing for me I like struggled a lot with just not seeing myself the way that God created me which is like fearfully and wonderfully made that's like Psalm 139 I talked about that in my video as well um but fearfully and wonderfully made perfectly formed and um basically created in the image of christ and so then that kind of leads back to you are royalty and you're worthy of um being loved and you're beautiful just as you are and like obviously you want to take care of your body and you don't you were given that body so you don't want to just sit around and eat a bunch of junk food and not take care of your body like that's a completely different thing but being content in your body and being content in the way that you are right now, as long as you, I like am a really strong believer in just pushing people to better themselves. And however that is, like if someone's not super into fitness, but they want to like go on walks every day just to keep their body moving and keep it healthy and strong. Like they don't have to be 
some heavy power lifter to be healthy. Like you can do different activities and stuff to be healthy, but I just like encourage people to love your body where it's at and choose to eat healthy and exercise because you love your body, not because you hate it. Because if you go into um, bettering yourself because you hate the way that you look, you're never going to get to where you want to be because your mindset is wrong. Your mindset is always going to be, if you start out like, oh my gosh, I hate the way I look. So I'm going to do all this stuff. And then once I get to this spot, I'm going to like the way I look like that. You have to be content in yourself where you start and love the journey and love the process that it takes because you're never going to get to that perfect physique or that perfect spot of like your goal. Like you can obviously achieve things and get your goals done and everything, but like life is a journey and a process and there's ups and downs. And so you have to just love the process, I guess. That's what I would say. Well, I mean with, um, definitely having you on with, you know, just putting in context of the fight, the current podcast, you obviously qualify really what fight the current podcast is, is people who are swimming upstream, people who are going against the norm. And I love the fact that you are being bold in who you are and you're going against what the typical, I would say millennial or just person in general is doing today. And that that's impressive just the fact that you're you're going against the norm so and what i love too morgan is you're not just the person that is fighting the current in your life but you're fighting the current and helping other people do it too you're not just yeah. focused on your personal growth and your personal self betterment but helping people around you that might have been struggling with things that you struggled with in the past so what are some things that you're doing outside i'll say the youtube community maybe in your local community maybe in your church Um, are you doing any kind of maybe small groups or bible studies that you're getting one-on-one with people video camera aside what are some things that you do in your life to help come alongside people and help them out well um i do train people in the gym and that is kind of going i guess with the body image type thing and Whenever I'm talking with someone that I'm going to be training, I always, always, always tell them that they need to get in the mindset, like I said, of loving yourself before and like making yourself better because you love the way that you look or like you love your body or whatever, not because you hate it. And I never want to train someone who says that they just absolutely hate everything about themselves because like I can encourage them and I can talk to them and try and change that mindset for them, but they have to ultimately be the one to change it. And if they're not going to take the actions or choose, which it's a choice. Like you have to choose every day then to just be like, okay, maybe today I'm a little bloated. I don't look that great. I don't look as good as yesterday, but that's okay. Our bodies fluctuate. We change. And so I'm still going to just keep going at it because I love the way that I look, not because I hate, the way that I am or whatever. So um, I try and encourage, but also really push my clients. My one client, she says sometimes in the gym that she hates me because of (laughs) (laughs) what I put her through in the workouts. But in the end, she says that she loves it because of the results and everything that she's seen and how strong she feels and how much more energy and just how better she feels um, from working out and changing changing up her diet. I guess in the church, I was recently, so I'm in an internship at my church right now. And I was starting out kind of as a worship leader, youth leader type internship. But we found that my calling wasn't really so much in youth leading. It was kind of hard because I did a lot of the worship at youth. So it was really hard for me to do all the worship and then go straight into being the counselor for the kids because I was always like doing worship and during ministry time when all the counseling would be happening, I would be up doing worship for that ministry time. Like just like background worship music, I still like keep the atmosphere and everything for that. So it was really hard for me to balance doing all the worship for youth, but also being a counselor. So for a little while I was um, encouraging our youth at our church, which I, I love talking to them and encouraging them, but it just was not fitting with my worship leading and 
like balancing the counseling and the worship leading at the same time, um, just because of how taxing both can be. So um, my main thing right now is worship leading. And I would say that the influence in worship leading is probably very large because of like, you're literally leading people into a deeper intimacy with God. And so you have to be a good leader and be able to like sense what's going on around you in the room and be able to tell if people are engaged or not and be able to, um, if something like comes into your mind that um, God is wanting you to speak to them, you have to be bold enough to like speak that and encourage them so that if like what you're saying might like break something off of someone so that they can enter into that intimacy with God in worship, which is like some of the most intimate times with God is in worship. And when you're um, just completely surrendering everything and just worshiping him and praising him for all that he's done and everything. So have you been able to, you know, you talked about the offline helping people in, in those areas. Uh, through your vlog and your YouTube channel, have you been able to help people or have people been impacted by your message or have reached out to you through that? Yeah. Yeah. I've had quite a few people actually. Um, I have a lot of people DM me on Instagram actually, just like telling me that different videos or different posts that I've made have like encouraged them or inspired them or whatever. And that's like super encouraging to me and like just really I love that. Like I always tell them on my videos, if you want prayer or anything, comment it down below. Or if it's more personal, then feel free to DM me on Instagram. And I don't want to be one of those influencers that like, I know my following is it's large, but not like insanely large, like a million followers or anything like that. But I I don't want to be one of those influencers that if I do end up getting a crazy amount of followers one day. I don't want to be an influencer that just leaves all the messages either on read or on requested. I want to actually engage and talk to people and be real with them. Like I don't I don't want to be someone who they just watch and thinks is cool and famous and they desire to know them or like want to be them. Like I want to be real with people and I want to actually create relationship and create community. So Well, what's up, guys? We hope you're enjoying the conversation we're having with Morgan Kraft as much as we are. We're excited for you guys to be on this journey along with us. We have a lot of awesome things coming out this year. We said on the last episode that we're going to get a consistent schedule worked out for this year, and we're excited to release that. That will be coming soon. We have really, really exciting interviews coming up, um, and we're talking about influencers and public figures with anywhere from tens of thousands of followers to up to hundreds of thousands of followers that are coming up. We even potentially have some new sponsors coming up and we have a lot of awesome, awesome things coming up. So we ask you guys, as we continue to grow and push the limits, you know, today we're on video, the very first video podcast for Fight the Current. As we continue to push the limits, if you are enjoying this show, we just ask that you leave a review on iTunes. That is that is the biggest compliment you could give us because as the reviews go up, the visibility of our show goes up and it just starts to elevate our presence online and elevate our presence on that platform. So we thank you for the reviews that have come in and we just ask you to continue to take the time, the, the really five seconds to scroll down and click at least, even if you don't want to write anything, just click the stars. Yeah, they help. Yeah, every every little bit helps and we just... We ask you guys to do that if you're enjoying the show. And if you're still listening to it at this point, we would assume that you're enjoying it. So at Fight the Current Podcast on iTunes, we're on every platform so far, soon to be Spotify as well. But we're talking about iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Google Music, SoundCloud, uh, and soon to be uh, Spotify. Absolutely. And we are super excited because we got three new reviews since the last podcast, since episode 11. So we just want to... Take the time, give you guys out there that left the reviews a little shout out. We just really want to let you guys know that we appreciate it. Starting off with Matty Ice 70 He says, awesome podcast. Love the transparency you guys showed with this. Keep up the great work. MCampeasy5 says, class act. Easy five stars. Always love the simple but profound content of FTC. This podcast definitely always inspires me to go get something done 
and always fight the current. Tony Campisi says, the best and upcoming podcast in a world full of wayward souls. These two men appear to be fearlessly and intentionally charging in pursuit of what matters, a significant life. It's extremely rare to experience this level of professionalism or authenticity in our world. These two men are a breath of fresh air, a light in the darkness, just what the podcast world needs. It's hard to find and recommend any podcast to adults and young minds alike, but this is the perfect audio prescription for all ages of listeners who may be struggling to blaze their own trail or different thinkers trying to find other mavericks and game changers in the culture of dead fish floating downstream. Clean, clear, informative, entertaining, and inspirational. Mark my words, this podcast is going to the top. So we absolutely hope that that's true. We hope that you guys are enjoying the content that we put out. Danny and I, our intention was never to just talk into a microphone and just hear ourselves talk. We really want to live lives of significant impact. We hope that the people that we bring on the show, the content that we're producing, the topics that we're talking about really do help and affect you. So if they do, absolutely head over to iTunes, leave us a review. And without further ado, we're going to get back to the conversation with Morgan. I think that's awesome, Morgan. I was actually just having a conversation with my pastor's wife uh, a couple days ago, and she was she was talking to me about kind of the struggle she has with social media. And she does a lot of leadership with the youth in her church, the the younger uh, generation of girls, and she's seen a lot of difficulty with the addiction to social media. And going back to kind of your body image um, topic. And she said, I wish these influencers on social media didn't care just about the follows and didn't care just about selling their product because you see those influencers out there that they have 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 followers on Instagram and they're constantly trying to sell their product. They're constantly, they have all these affiliate links and it's like they're doing it, they're, they're selling their soul essentially. So can you just hit on, I mean, you obviously are completely opposite. You're truly there for people. You're truly there. You're not all about the numbers, but you're about the lives that you can impact. Can you share how you can help people that they might be scrolling through Instagram, seeing these influencer links, and they might just tune out of social media in general? And what I try to tell her is you have to focus on the war that you can win. Social media is always going to be there, but the content that you put out can be different. So talk into how your content that you're putting out there, how do you um, aspire that to be an influence in their lives positively, not just selling stuff, but getting real with people? Um, sorry, I'm like confused as to what you're asking. <laughs> sorry, let me clarify. So influencers out there, speed, size, and numbers, they're only looking yeah. at their following, they're looking at their affiliate links. Can you dive into maybe the struggle that you might have with those other fellow influencers and the content they're they're putting out versus the content that you're putting out with um, the stuff that's actually helping people, the uh, maybe increasing the confidence, um, being there for prayer. I think that's amazing that you're there um, for prayer and just getting real with their struggle. Explain how okay. yeah. your content kind of differs from that. Um. Now, obviously, I don't know um, other influencers' motives or why they're actually doing what they're doing or <clears throat> what they're promoting. I don't know what the contracts are or whatever. So I, I can't really judge. I, I never want to judge anyone in general based on what I see. I guess not judge a book by its cover. Because um, also, like, I don't know where their heart's at. I don't know. Like, I, I'm not one to judge what they're doing or, like, where they're at or what or how they got where they are but um i personally i i have like some affiliate links i have some companies that i've worked with that i've tried to promote and everything um but i never want to promote something that i don't already know that i like myself so um i don't want someone i don't want to just promote for the money or promote for free stuff so if I don't like the product, I'm not going to promote it. Like the company is welcome to send something to me, but I always preface any email with like, if I'm like responding to someone, like I'm not going to promote your product if I don't like 
genuinely love it. And I don't actually think that other people are going to like it. And so like, I am just saying that to say like, I've done promotions and I've done things like that, like influencer, like whatever is the typical influencer type thing to do. But, um, I don't ever want someone to look at me as like the influencer. That's like, I don't want someone to put me on a pedestal. If that makes sense. I want to just be, I want to be with them and like walk with them. So what are some examples of some companies that might have came to you in the past and you kind of turned them down essentially? Maybe it doesn't match up with um, your vision, your moral compass, um, your relationship with Christ. What are some things did you have to turn down companies in the past that reached out to you? Yeah, um, there was a point in time when I was actually receiving quite a flood of emails and it was sometimes it's just too many and I don't want to like, not that I don't want to put the time into them, but I just know I won't have the time to put into promoting their things. And I don't want to be someone that's just posting only product posts. So I don't want to just have every single video, every single Instagram post be a product promotion because that just seems like robotic in a sense, at least to me. And so, um, but I've had quite a few like swimwear brands, for example, reach out and want me to do a try on video. And for me, I don't want to do that. I don't want to like, I mean, I love watching try on videos to see like how swimsuits look on other people before I buy them, but that's for them. They can do that. That's just not something that I want to do. I don't want to try on a bunch of swimsuits and like have that on my channel. Cause that's just not like something that I want. I don't, I'm not comfortable standing in front of a camera in a bathing suit and having people like constantly watch that. And that's just, I just feel like that's not appropriate for me. And so other people, great. I love their videos. I'll watch them. It's helpful. I love try on stuff. But for me, that's not something that I want to put on my channel. And so I've turned down many swimwear brands for that reason. So yeah, right. And and so you're, you're picking your character over money because I'm sure they're they're paying and I'm sure yeah. there, there's influence when it comes influence or money, which both equate to the same thing over time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's admirable that you're, that you're turning them down when of course there's, you're also turning down money. You're also turning down more views because yeah. you'd get way more views, right? From, yep. you know, the, the typical guys or the typical people out there. I mean, how many Instagram chant, like, I mean, I didn't check how many followers or whatever you have on Instagram, but I'm sure you'd have 10 times as many if you did that stuff on your Instagram as well. But we obviously you're, you're holding yourself to another standard. That's respectable. That's fighting the current. So I want to, you know, just, I know we're, we're, we're still on this topic and because you're our first, uh, guest who we have, who is, who is a woman and you are a millennial and a lot of, you know, I don't know if a lot of millennials are listening to us, but I'm sure a good amount, uh, more as, Hopefully. as we go. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and I just wanted to uh, focus this on, on women and just say, what would you say to, let's just say a girl that's even your age or younger. And what would be some of the biggest advice that you would give just in general? It doesn't have to be the body image thing, but maybe that is a big thing, but what would you tell them? Like anyone or females, especially just females. Okay. We'll, well do it. We'll do it. Anyone as well. We're going to start with females. What would you tell okay. a young girl who's listened to this? Because I know people saying, Oh, fight the current just did their first girl. So girls are going to be attracted to this message. Yeah. So let's talk about that. And then your, your uh, general advice. Well, to all my ladies out there, um, all your ladies would, out there, all my ladies, because you know that people are going to be watching this from, from your followers. Oh so, yeah, I'm going to freaking promote this. Right? <laughs> <Hype> it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I would tell them or tell you guys listening to um, learn to love yourself the way that you are, and learn to see yourself through the eyes of God. And if you're not, if they're not like following Christ, then watch some of my videos because I talk a lot about it. So you can learn about that there if you're curious. But um, to just not worry about seeking affirmation from man, 
And I mean that in general, not like the male species, but anyone like mankind, um, but especially from men, like don't, don't seek your affirmation from another human, your affirmation and who you are should come from what God says about you and the love that God has for you. Because if you try and seek affirmation from man, you're never going to be fulfilled and you're always going to be comparing. And there's always that thing of comparing yourself to someone else or comparing yourself to another woman, but you have to know that you're your own person and you're unique for a reason. And if everybody looked exactly the same and acted exactly the same, then this world would be really boring and no one would want to be doing stuff in this world because it'd be super boring if everybody was exactly the same. So that's like super cliche to say, be yourself, but like, honestly be yourself because that's the best version that you can be is who you are created to be. Yeah. I think that's great advice for, for young girls to hear because I know the comparison thing is huge. Mm. I mean, yeah. your, your, your girlfriend probably deals with that stuff as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I don't know. I mean, I know my mom, my girlfriends I've had in the past are just, it, it seems like girls are constantly comparing themselves to others. Yeah. And, um, they look at each other more than guys look at other girls. It's like, Oh, that girl has this. And I don't, you know, it just seems yeah. like there, there's a, there's a big comparison, but that is great advice that, that you gave. Um, is there anything else you would say on that topic? I don't know. Um, actually, yeah, you probably should, like, all you girls should support each other and not tear each other down because you want something that they have. Or, like, I feel like people tear people down or, like, hurting people hurt people. Or if you're jealous of someone, you're going to actually tear them down in your insecurity. And so don't do that. You should hype them up so that they can hype you up back. And then it's all just like all goes together and it's just rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I love it. So so hurting people hurt people. I love that I love that yeah. quote. Um so now what's your advice for the the ROW, the rest of the world? Since we you know, obviously we talked about before that you're the influencer of the you're gonna influence the whole world, not just women. Oh man. I mean, I would say this, like, I don't want to change what I'm saying just based on, like, gender, but, like, there obviously is, like, different advice to give to a male than there is to a female, but, like, sure. overall, I think that anyone should just know who they are in Christ, be able to be confident in who they are, and be able to just, um, I always just say, learn to just be, and that is, like, be still. And basically be still and know that I am God is that one verse and says, just like, just be, be who you are, be who you're created to be, seek your calling. And something that I um, learned recently, I was listening to, I think it was Stephen Furtick on, from Elevation. I think it was one of his messages, but he talked about how you're not, you, everybody seeks their calling, but, or like their purpose. Not everyone has just one purpose or one calling because like in one season of your life, you could be um, at one. Like, so he gave the example when he got married, his calling was to be a husband to his wife. But then when he had kids, his calling was to not only be a husband, but also be a father. And like his overall calling and his purpose in ministry was to be a pastor. But he also had other callings in his life and other things that God wanted him to do and God brought into his life so that he could influence and have other purpose than just one thing. And so I would say to not seek one calling, but seek the purpose and the position in that season of your life that you need to be doing. So if that's at a job that you don't necessarily like, well, then take that job. And I'm in that right now, the job that I have, that's bringing me income while I'm trying to get up my personal training and bring up YouTube. I don't necessarily enjoy it the most, but, and I do like, honestly, like I probably complain too much about it, 
to my parents sometimes and they if they were here they'd be like yes she complains way too much about her job but well they're going to be I, watching this so they they will say that while they're watching this <laughs> yeah they'll come to me and they'll be like yep definitely yep, um still wait. complaining <laughs> yeah so like you just have to be um in the mindset that you're going to go through different seasons of life and so what you're walking through or what you're doing or what you're given right now that's your calling and there might be a bigger purpose and a bigger calling that you're shooting for and you're trying to get to, but it's kind of going back to love the process, love the journey, learn to be content and be at peace and choose joy where you're at. Even if it's a super difficult situation or if it's like, if your life is super great and you can like easily feel happy, then like there's a difference between joy and happiness. Like happiness comes and goes, but like choosing joy, that joy is like, something that just fills you from the inside out and just overflows. And you have to choose that. Like you can be happy in one setting or one season of life, but then that happiness could die down or leave whenever something goes wrong or it changes and you're not, and you kind of get uncomfortable, but choosing to be joyful through anything and like having a positive mindset and perspective of things, then that is kind of, I don't know. That's what I would say. Like choose to choose joy and, choose to love your process and love your journey and have a positive outlook wherever you are what do you tell the person morgan that they might just be lost they might feel pulled in multiple directions or they might not have a clear direction of what did god put me on this earth to do or what is my calling what do you tell that person that has no clue how can they kind of spend some time with god and refine that and find that it's probably a lot of people yeah i know me personally i've struggled with that at times like god what what do you want me to do like i'm completely lost i felt like you were pulling me this direction and now Mm -hmm. i'm 180 in this direction um well first and foremost is getting with god and be able to put down your phone put down your technology and like just kind of clear your mind of all the crazy thoughts you might be having like I should be doing this or maybe I should be doing that or like if you have groceries you have to go buy like and you're like have all these crazy thoughts in your head but like being able to sit down with God and just be and be still and like listen because he's gonna come with a still small voice and speak to you not he's not gonna come with like this bold crazy voice and a megaphone and be super loud and obnoxious I mean he could if he wanted to but usually he doesn't and so you have to be in relationship with God and be constantly pursuing a relationship with God and talking to him every day so that you know his voice. So like, I always relate it to, you probably talk to your parents or like someone that you're living with, you talk to them every day. So if you were in a room and you had your eyes closed and you had a bunch of people talking to you at different times, you could pick out their voice because you know it. And you spent the time to get to know them. You spent the time to know their voice. And it's the same thing with God. If you don't spend time with him consistently, then you're not going to know his voice when he's speaking to you. And he's going to come with a still small voice. And sometimes it might even sound like yourself, but you'll know the difference when you have a peace about what he's telling you. And so you have to get in relationship with him and spend time with him and seek what he's telling you. And also another thing is if you feel like you're not hearing anything from him, but you're getting with God and you're talking to him consistently and you know his voice. Um, if you still feel like he's not speaking anything to you, well, maybe he's just giving he's giving you a no, he's giving you a yes, or he's giving you a wait. And so typically, if you're not hearing from him, he's saying wait, because his timing is always perfect. And so if he's not telling you something yet, or like you want to know now, like it might not be the time for that. He knows when you need to hear something and what you need to hear. And so he's going to tell you in the perfect timing because he's not going to give you every single step to your entire life because you wouldn't know what to do with all of that. It's kind of like reading a book. Like you can't skip a page of the book and move on to like two pages after and be able to understand what's happening in the book. If It's like a strategically planned book, which your life is very strategically planned by God. And so You have to read each word, read each page, like in that order, in order to 
understand it. And so if you feel like you're not hearing from God, then he might just be saying, wait, and just keep praying and just keep, um, keep building your boat kind of like Noah. He told Noah to build that boat. And Noah was like, why the heck am I building a boat? There's no rain. We haven't had water literally ever. And all these people are making fun of him. But he was like, no, God told me to do this. And so I'm going to keep doing it for 120 years or whatever it was that he did. And um, then when it flooded and everyone else was drowning, Noah was in his boat chilling. So (laughs) (laughs) um, yeah, I, I would say... Does that answer the question, I hope? It does. That was that was phenomenal. Yeah. You okay. have so much insight and wisdom. It's incredible. Yeah, I saw someone put on your YouTube channel that you have uh, wisdom beyond your years, and that's definitely true. How old are you? 19. Okay. Wow. I thought you were a little <laughs> older. So, yeah, definitely, definitely have wisdom beyond your years. I so think that was we want- my mom that commented that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that changes things. Moms are supposed to think that. I'm just kidding. But it's so clear, too, is you have the way of taking maybe a complex way of thinking or a complex problem and just break it down to these are some simple steps of what you need to do. Like, I love it. I mean, that's what the definition of genius is, is making the complex simple. So did you know that you were a genius? Did not. Well, now you know. (laughs) <laughs> so there's one more topic that I did want to cover uh, before we before we close. And it's just because I was like, I was going to skip this. I was like, this is a little bit controversial. But I was like, no, this is Fight the Current Podcast. We're going to cover controversial topics because uh, we love controversial topics and people love to hear controversial topics. Plus, you're our first female guest and this is a female question. So <laughs> right. when we talked before the interview started, um, uh, we mentioned just – for like a second about the feminist movement mm-hmm. and you're like, Oh, I'm not a feminist or whatever. So let's talk about your opinion on the feminist movement. This is going to be the last topic. So we don't have to go too long, but I'm just curious while we have you here, uh, what's the, your opinion, what's the good, the bad and your, your, um, your side on it, your take. Well, this probably isn't going to take very long because I don't really pay attention much to all the feminist stuff that's going on because I hate drama. I absolutely hate drama. I cannot deal with it. I find that I am hanging out with a lot of guys more so than girls because girls are too petty and dramatic. And I just can't deal with that. I mean, I obviously have some of my close friends that are girls, but like, I just don't like drama. And the feminist thing to me is like very dramatic and too extra. And I don't know, like I think it's great that girls want to support girls like yeah do that but also like I think people should support people in general whether you're a guy or a girl it doesn't matter like support people if you're a girl support a guy if you're a girl support a girl vice versa whatever it is like it doesn't have to be like shunning men and only girls are for girls like type thing like so Super. would you say those are the negative sides? What are the negative sides you you think of the feminist attitude or or movement? Um, I mean, I think it's probably pretty negative that people being born in this day and age are being brought up possibly with like that mindset or being taught that or seeing that all over the place, and so then it's kind of like building an army of feminists, I guess, in a way, because they're being born into it. And so whether they um, want to or not, they may not know right, they may not know right from wrong, or they may not know anything different from it, if that's what they're being taught or brought up in. And now, like, I'm not going to bash someone for being a feminist, like they can choose what they want, like, I'm going to love people, no matter what, whether I agree with, I can't speak, whether I agree or not with their decisions like i'm not going to agree with everyone's decision all the time but that doesn't mean i'm going to be mean to them and i'm not going to love them as christ would because we all do stuff that god doesn't like but he loves us anyway and so i'm not i'm not gonna whether i agree with someone or not it's not going to change how i treat the person but i don't personally agree with like all the feminist stuff and like I mean, this is kind of a very controversial topic, but like abortions, I cannot 
with that because that's literally murder and that's how i see it cuz like that is a living being little tiny thing that's going to be born and if someone says that that's not murder then they need to like get with god and check themselves <laughs> i will get so salty about this if i keep going <laughs> so <laughs> what would you how would you define cuz you know we're not going to take a side on the whole necessarily uh, the whole stance on pro feminism or whatever what would what is your definition of of feminism like um like when you said in the beginning like when we talked off off camera you're like well i'm not a feminist what what does that mean that you're not so that means you're a, you're a non-feminist or what does that mean that you're not a feminist what would that yeah, i'm a non-feminist be? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like i just i don't really know a lot about feminism like i said because i don't really study it or like pay attention to it as much but i'm not like only about supporting like girls supporting girls or like i don't like the idea of abortion or like just i don't know i just would not class my classify myself as a feminist i don't know the full definition of it or like all the stuff that goes into it but what i've heard from like just bits and pieces of it like I want to support everyone and I want everyone to support everyone. And like, I want like mankind to just all be one big happy family, not separating based on gender or whatever. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to get your, your perspective on it just, you know, uh, as a female perspective, but yeah. So we're going to, we're going to close on a couple questions that we have for you. Absolutely. So Morgan, you're obviously speaking with us on the Fight the Current podcast. Something that we ask every single guest that comes on the show is what does it mean to you in your life to fight the current? Um, not being normal, not following the norm or what people or like if someone looks at me, I don't want them to just be like, she's just like everyone else. I want to stand out and I want to be a light in a dark world basically that's awesome that's a good that's answer great. yeah that's a it. cool that's a really unique answer we <laughs> haven't got anything like that before okay so yeah the only other question we have is just how can the listeners viewers now because we got the the video how can the listeners and viewers continue to follow you and your message and what you stand for is this like my time to plug or sure yeah Absolutely. yeah this is, this is your time to do shameless plugging because for people who because some people are gonna may listen to you and be like don't want to listen to her again but the other people are gonna be like i really want to listen to her again i want yeah. more of her i want to know her and the fact that you said you interact with people on instagram and things like literally people could be listening to this in a different state or country and become a friend yeah. of yours one day just from you know hearing your story on the fight the current podcast yeah, social media is super cool. I've met a lot of people and like actually made relationship on social media with a lot of people. But um, well, my Instagram is morgancraft08. Craft is with a C, by the way, not a K. And then YouTube is just morgancraft. And like and subscribe, follow, like my post, comment, DM me like for real. <laughs> like I will respond to your DMs as long as they're not like weird and creepy. Because I've got some weird and creepy ones, and those ones I'm just, like, not trying to keep going. But usually I get ones <laughs> that are, like, just genuine and asking questions or wanting prayer for something. So I will most likely DM you back if it's not weird and creepy. Um, yeah, I don't always get back right away, but eventually I will. So y'all can follow me and interact watch my videos, comment. So, And everyone needs to go over and check out that 10,000 calorie video oh, to yeah. see if Morgan yes. actually does it. So yep. like you have the podcast, you guys now have full permission that you can go and check out that video. And <laughs> if you didn't already, if you didn't already during the podcast, 10,000 calories is a lot. What is that? Five times the amount you're supposed to eat in a day. Yeah, about. 
supposed i know we're we're, we're fitness people so we know that it's really not the, the actual De- amount, but depends what? depends on if you're cutting or bulking <laughs> sure yeah yep i get all that well awesome well thank you so much appreciate your time thank you for being on the show yeah thank and you for having me of course well you have a great day thanks Morgan. you as well You've been listening to the Fight the Current podcast, your guide to living an extraordinary life in an ordinary world. We ask you to subscribe and review this podcast as it helps out a lot. We sincerely hope that you've gotten value out of today, and if so, we would love to hear from you. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages and give us a shout out. Keep posted for our next upcoming episodes, and until next time, swim upstream and fight the current.